Okay guys, so bonus time. Bonus time, bonus time, bonus time. We're gonna just talk a little bit about whether or not the Prate exam is relevant and whether or not it helps you to do well on the board exam. So there is great debate about this. If you go and look at any forum, if you go and look at any of the Reddit pages, you'll hear all different kinds of opinions from trainees and, and attendings and early career psychiatrists. You know, some will say that, yeah, this is super relevant information that's covered on the parade and the questions are similar to what you see on the board. And then you'll get a whole bunch of other people on the opposite side saying that the parade questions are arbitrary. A lot of them are poorly written. It doesn't really make any, any sense to know some of these things that they're testing. They're testing obscure topics and, and obscure things that aren't relevant clinically. So what's the truth? Well, like many things in life, and if you become a psychiatrist, like many things in psychiatry, it's a gray area. It's not a black and white issue. Yes, there are some people who are gonna be on one side and maybe that's true for them. Maybe in their experience and the way they learn and the way they study, they found that you know preparing for Prate and doing, the, doing these tests once a year really wasn't helpful at all and didn't indicate anything about their knowledge or clinical skills. So it's going to depend on the person that you talk to and their opinion and thoughts about what is helpful and what isn't helpful for somebody taking these examinations. Now, is it relevant clinically? Generally speaking, I personally think that USMLE exams, Sprite exams, have very limited clinical utility, right? They're not really testing your clinical skills, they're testing your knowledge base in the subject matter. So the goal is different, right? The goal is not to see like, can you interview a patient? Can you come up with a diagnosis? Can you formulate a plan? Do you understand some of the basic psychopharmacology? That's not really what the test is testing. The test is, is, is looking to see what is your knowledge base and depth of understanding of psychiatric information? Do you understand enough that you can go beyond the basics, right? Because when it comes to other people, like say, you know, nurse practitioners in your field, PAs in your field, family practice doctors, they're gonna wanna know why should I come to you as a psychiatrist? Right? Why should I go see you as a specialist and pay all this extra money to see you when you're just doing the same thing that a family doc can do or you're doing the same thing that a nurse practitioner can do? So you wanna separate yourself and one of those ways to separate yourself is to understand and have a depth of understanding of psychiatry, of psychotherapy, of psychopharmacology, right? You really want to be that much better. You want to be able to think up and come up with treatment plans and concepts that other practitioners are not thinking about. Because again, this is your area of expertise. This is what you studied and spent your life trying to understand. So very important. But again, does the test really say anything about your clinical skills? Probably not. Is it important for the board? I think so, because you gotta imagine that the same people writing these questions are also probably writing questions for your board exam. So they're going to test not the same topics, but similar topics for sure, and there is going to be some overlap. Plus, whatever prep you put in now, like I gave those examples of particular uh, board exam questions, like uh, board vitals or, or Pride Genius or whatever the case is, all of those things are, are going to help you uh, and get, gain more knowledge and understanding, make it easier when you do go to take your board exam to do well on it. So I don't think it's entirely wasted time studying and preparing for this exam. The last thing I'll say is that people will care about this score. Maybe not every attending you work with, maybe not the other residents in your program, but I can tell you the program directors look at this and they care about it. At least in my program, our program director is, is heavily invested and another program I'm closely affiliated with, the program director is also heavily invested in the idea of his residents doing well on um, Prite. So it sort of helps you to develop a good reputation with the program director as not only good clinically, right? As long as you're displaying those skills clinically, right? You're not, you're not a crappy clinician. And you're also should demonstrating to them, hey, I have a great knowledge base. I know, I know a lot about psychiatry. I'm actively working and studying on it. So from the perspective of impressing your PD, who's gonna be doing your evaluations, who's eventually going to be signing off on your, uh, you know, completion of training and ability to sit for the board exam, 
you're gonna want that person on your side and you're gonna want them to think, hey, this guy's ready for the board exam. Because these programs get judged based on the number of people who successfully complete the board exam, right? They want people to pass. If you get a bunch of failures and your and your pass rate's 70%, you know, your program, people are gonna say, eh, I don't know what's going on at this program, but people don't pass the board when they graduate. That becomes a major issue. So those are just some of my free association thoughts on the Pride exam, whether or not it's relevant to you. If you have different thoughts or want to share some comments, please place them in the comment section below and like and subscribe to the channel so we can continue making content for you.